Hello again, I'm Matthew Gore from TheWetPen.com, and I have a confession to make. I don't really like Tomoe River paper that much, and for a year or so now, I've been looking for a good alternative. Mostly, I've been buying Japanese notebooks like these, and I've recently heard good things about Graffilo and Cosmo Air Light papers, so I decided to get some and check them out. In fact, I got all three of these notebooks in the past couple of weeks from Yoseka Stationery, along with their Origin bottle of ink. But that's not to say that I don't appreciate Tomoe River paper, too. For me, it's still the standard against which all other papers are compared when it comes to controlling poorly behaved ink. And I do use a fair amount of waterproof ink that requires good paper, so I have a variety of notebooks that are filled with Tomoe River paper, too. And maybe this is weird, but I really love the smell of a freshly opened package of Tomoe River paper. It has such a nice pine lumber fragrance. Hmm. That said, I don't really like the feel of the paper or the weight, especially the 52 gram, but the 68 GSM still isn't great. I don't like its crinkly sound and feel, even though I know that a lot of pen lovers really do appreciate that. Anyway, today we're only going to be looking at two of these, the Cosmo Note and the blank Graffilo. This Graffilo notebook is considerably thinner than the Cosmo, with only 64 pages, but it still costs $15. The Cosmo has 176 pages and costs $20, so about half as much per page. As usual, this video is not sponsored, and I paid for these notebooks myself. To test these papers out, I searched through my ink collection for the most horribly behaved inks that I own, and I also wanted to try out an ink that's just on the feathery side of normal and it turns out that they're all Noodler's inks. The worst offenders are sold exclusively in the British market, and include Monkey Hanger, Brexit, and Britannia's Blue Waves, though I didn't end up using Brexit in this video. For something a little better behaved, I went with Bay State Blue, which is one of my favorite Noodler's inks, but it does feather a little bit on some papers. And finally, I added Noodler's Blue Nose Bear. This is a green ink that is intended to spread and feather to create a sort of a blue outline to the green ink. Now, just so that you have a basis for comparison, let me very quickly show you what these inks look like on Rhodia paper. Here's Bay State Blue, written with a glass pen, and also a medium nib Faber-Castell loam. And here's Blue Nose Bear. And Monkey Hanger, which I also wrote with a Pinator Avatar UR with a medium nib. And finally, here's Britannia's Blue Waves, written on the second line with a double broad nib in a Kanpur Heritage pen. Zooming in a bit, here are those results. The Bay State Blue has almost no feathering on this paper, which is as expected, since it's pretty well behaved on decent paper. But here's the Blue Nose Bear, and you can see that there's quite a bit of feathering. Looking at the Monkey Hanger, there's some feathering, but primarily there's just spread. This bottom line was written with a medium nib, but looks like it was a broad or a double broad. And here's Britannia's Blue Waves, which is very similar to Monkey Hanger. It might feather a little bit less and spread a little bit more, but they're pretty close.
And as I said earlier, Tomoe River paper is really the standard against which everything is compared, so we might as well take a quick look at that too. First, base state blue, which looks about the same as it did on the Rhodia. But with the blue nose bare, there's a dramatic difference. The ink doesn't bleed at all on the Tomoe River, it just looks like a normal greenish ink. With the monkey hanger, I globbed down quite a bit of ink on the first letter or two, and there's a little feathering there. And I guess there's a little here and there overall, but not much. And there's still a modest amount of spreading, but much less than on the Rhodia. And again, the same thing is true with Britannia's blue waves. Okay, so let's see how these inks behave on the Cosmo Air light paper. Here's the base state blue, and also with the fountain pen. Looks just fine. So far, so good. Now here's the blue nose bear. Right away, we see that this is much better behaved than the Rhodia paper. There's really no feathering at all. This looks just like the Tomoe River paper in that regard. Impressive. Now, here's the monkey hanger. And again, this Cosmo paper is doing really well. No feathering, and even the spreading is pretty well controlled. And here's the Britannia's blue waves, and also with the double broad nib. Again, very similar to the monkey hanger. No feathering, and not much spread. And now, finally, we get to the Graffilo. To start off, here's the base state blue, which it handles with ease. No problem there. And here's the blue nose bear. Ah, but here's a real difference. The blue nose bear is starting to bleed quite a bit, and looks quite different from the Cosmo and Tomoe River papers. Okay, moving on to the monkey hanger. This is a lot of feathering and spread. In fact, this is quite a bit worse than the Rhodia. And no surprise at this point, the Britannia's Blue Waves is just about the same, with very heavy feathering and spread, from the glass dip pen and also the double broad nib. Let's take a look at these side by side. Here, the Cosmo is on the right, and the Graffilo is on the left. Actually, let's take a closer look than that. These are still photographs, which give me better resolution. With Base State Blue, there's not much difference to see. But with Blue Nose Bear, there's really no comparison. Here's Monkey Hanger, and again, up close, you can really see all of that feathering and spread on the Graffilo. It's not a subtle difference. And the Britannia's Blue Waves, if anything, this one is even worse on the Graffilo than the Monkey Hanger. And with that, I think we have our answer. When it comes to controlling feathering in poorly behaved inks, the Cosmo Air Light paper is dramatically better than the Graffilo, and at least as good as Tomoe River paper. In fact, the Graffilo was probably even worse than Rhodia at controlling spread and feathering with these inks. Oh, and before I forget, let's take a look at Bleed Through. Starting with the Cosmo, there's just a little bit of Bleed Through here on the heaviest parts of Britannia's Blue Waves. Otherwise, there's none to speak of, and the ghosting isn't too bad either. On the Graffilo, there is absolutely no bleed through, which is great, although it's probably because the ink spreads outward so much instead of sinking into the paper. But there's also not too much in the way of ghosting, so this paper might be great if you're using reasonable fountain pen inks. These Noodlers ones are decidedly not reasonable. For comparison, here's the back of the page of the 68GSM Tomoe River paper that I showed you earlier. 
surprisingly, it's the worst of the bunch. And I could leave it at that at this point, but I'm also curious about how well these papers handle sheening inks. So let's take a quick look. But before we do, let me remind you to subscribe to my channel here if this is the sort of thing that you're interested in, and maybe give it a like if you do. Okay, I'm going to start off on the Cosmo paper with what I consider to be a medium sheening ink. Then I'll try more of a super sheener, and then a couple of inks that are low sheen to see which paper makes the most of it. My medium sheening ink today is Colorverse NASA Blue. This is an exclusive color at Drum Ghouls in Texas. It's a medium dark blue ink with an orangey red sheen. The ink in this Moonman pen is Trammel Volga River, which some of you may have seen in my video a couple of months ago. Which reminds me, I have two bottles of those inks to give away. Here are the winners. Anyway, in my Diplomat Arrow here, I have Birmingham's Voltaic Arc. Not a ton of sheen on this ink, but the broad nib should help. And finally, here at the bottom is Birmingham's Ultramarine. It's possible to get a little sheen out of this ink, but I don't even really consider it a sheening ink. Let's see what we get. I won't make you watch me scrawl all of these on the Graffilo paper too. Let's just skip ahead a bit to the comparison, shall we? Okay, after having given them a few minutes to dry, here's the NASA blue on the Cosmo paper. That sheen is almost salmon in this light. And here's the same thing on the Graffilo paper. And as you can see, it's at least as good as the Cosmo. These were both written with a dip pen, so this difference may be the result of different amounts of ink, but they're both sheening pretty well. Now here's the Volga River, and this magenta sheen is so heavy on both papers that you can hardly tell that this is blue ink from this angle. I'd say that these are sheening pretty evenly here. Now here's Voltaic Arc, and as you can see, there's quite a bit less sheen on both examples. In these photos, I think that the Cosmo sheen looks a little shinier, but that's just the photo. In real life, they're pretty much indistinguishable. And finally, here's the Birmingham Ultramarine. Very little sheen, just at the beginning, where the dip pen was dropping the most ink. I'm surprised to see that on the Graffilo, even though there was some feathering with this ink, there appears to be at least as much sheen maybe even a bit more. Again, I used a dip pen, so this isn't a consistent way to test. I'd probably call these even. So while the Cosmo paper has a clear advantage when it comes to handling feathering, the Graffilo will give you equally good sheen, and it's also very strong at handling bleed through. This is not intended to be a complete review of either of these papers or notebooks, and there are probably a lot of other things that I'd consider in a full review, but for the high price and the way it feathers, I probably wouldn't buy Graffilo paper again, but I do like it for better behaved inks. And that's it. Again, if you like this sort of thing, Subscribe and like the video below. It's a huge help to small channels like this one. Enjoy your pens and ink, everyone, and stay safe out there.